Hey everybody, this is Brian. Uh, I finished a very long project and I posted it out on Facebook and I had some feedback asking for, hey, can you kind of explain this in depth? So basically what this is, is I wanted to do a like home security system, um, but I wanted motion detectors. So I took these little cheap uh, adjustable PRI motion sensors. You can see like $2.62 and the graphics not the best, but you can see it's very small. Here's the actual, whoops. Here's the actual sensor. Um, calling it a motion sensor is kind of not accurate. It actually detects variance in heat, and that's how it detects motion. They are dirt cheap, and they are almost impossible to defeat. Um, I've tried several different ways to defeat these things, from aiming a laser at it to making sure that I was exactly like a room temperature, but now it picks up any little variance. Um, along with being very cheap, they're very simple. You see the orange things allow you to adjust. I think it's like the horizontal and vertical scanning. Um, that might not actually be accurate, but uh, and it's just got three little pens. It's got uh, positive, negative, and then uh, little. I, I don't remember what it's called, but it's like a uh, voltage. It just tells you, hey, there was motion. So whenever there's motion, it'll actually put out voltage on that pen. And you can buy them in bulk. They're pretty, pretty simple little devices. Um, with that, I hooked it to what's called a particle photon. And let me, whoops, here's the actual detector that I built. That is the back side of the motion detector. You see there's little orange knobbies that you can adjust. And there's the wires, the positive and negative. And then here is the, uh, it's not a data line, but it's just like a voltage line. So in motion, it sends voltage down here, and this will just pick it up. Now, this little silver guy in the center, that's actually a Wi-Fi chipset. So really what I've done is I put a motion detector on my wireless network. Um, so when this thing detects motion, it'll go out to a Raspberry Pi. Whoops, this is the actual front side of that detector that I built. See, there's the motion detector. And I built like, I think like six or nine of them, something like that. They're scattered throughout the house. And there it is plugged in. It's just a little micro USB, plugs right into the wall. And it, yeah, here it is. It goes to this Raspberry Pi. Um, now, why did I use a Raspberry Pi? Simple, I had it here. I had it laying around the house. I've had it for a few years. I got it as like a Christmas present. Um, so I put it to uh, 802.1, I think, B wireless uh, USB adapter. And it just, you know, fired right up. Now, these sensors whoops, do an HTTP get. So when this sees motion, it does a web request over to the Raspberry Pi, which has a, a full LAMP stack on here. It's running uh, Linux, Apache, uh, uh, what am I using? Yeah, Yi 2.0 is the uh, PHP framework that I actually used. And then, you know, it stores everything in the database. So basically it gets motion. It goes to here. This little guy says, is Brian home? Yes or no. And if the answer is no, then it sends me a text message. It contacts 911 and it does a few other snazzy things. Um, so to determine whether or not I was home, I also made an Android application. Here's a screenshot off my actual phone. And it's very simple. Um, off, on, awake, sleep, and ping. Um, ping's kind of misleading. Uh, off obviously turns all the motion detectors off. It's not really true. They constantly detect motion whether they're off or on. Uh, it just flips a bit in the MySQL database, and the Raspberry, Ti Raspberry Pi checks that to see, you know, the status. Is it off? Is it on? Et cetera, et cetera. So if it's off, it just ignores all motion. If it's on, however, it registers all motion and says, hey, there was motion, and then it sends out through an email gateway. Um, I think AT&T and Verizon both have them. It's like uh, text at ATT or something like that, but basically it just has my phone number or 911 and then a basic message, and it just sends it out. It'll AT&T automatically converts it into a text message and shoots it out for me. Um, and then I have awake and asleep. These are, take a little bit of explaining. Uh, the Android application runs as a background service, and I'll actually show the code here in a minute. But once a minute, it'll do an HTTP get back to this Raspberry Pi, this guy, and say, hey, I'm home, so if there's motion, just ignore it, because it's me walking around my house. Now, asleep turns that off. It's the same thing as on, but there's special flags on some of the detectors. Um, and let me go in here. Here's the actual web interface, and this is actually right off the Raspberry Pi. Um, so here's the detectors. You can see how uh, Bedroom has enabled Asleep as No. 
while the others have it as yes. Because when I'm laying in bed, if I roll over in the middle of the night, I don't want the motion that was just detected to register and sound the alarm because that Android application will actually sound a very loud alarm to wake me up. So my phone's laying right next to me at night. It detects motion in, say, the living room. Well, guess what? I'm not in the living room. I'm in bed sleeping. So it's going to, you know, make a very loud alarm sound, contact 911 and do all this other stuff. So before I've even... Before I've even rolled out of bed and wiped the sleep out of my eyes, 911's already been contacted. Um, I'm not ultra paranoid. I just it was a project that I really wanted to do. Um, and you can enable or disable. So if I have guests, I can say you know guest room, disable that. So when there's motion in there, it's not going to wake me up too. This was tricky for a few reasons. Um, a, I, I'm not a hardware guy at all. I mean, I built my own gaming computers and I fixed laptops and you know half a million dollar servers and networks and things like that but i've never actually just grabbed a bunch of hardware and started plugging it all together and wiring it up and writing the firmware for it um so i had to get a bunch of these little sensors i had to get a bunch of these little little boxes and little things i think all in all these are about 30 bucks each to build because these little enclosures were a little expensive the particle phonons themselves are about 19 bucks each uh the pri sensors are like three bucks but I got most of this for free because I had the Raspberry Pi as a Christmas present. I had the particle phonons as Christmas presents on a different Christmas. So all of this stuff was just, you know, laying around the house collecting dust, and I wanted to do something with it. Um, also, I used particle photons because the documentation is just amazing on these, and it comes with a cloud-based system. Um, when you set these up, yeah, let me scroll up here. Here's the actual photon right here. When you set these bad boys up, it's very simple. You plug it into your computer or into an electrical outlet or whatever, um, and you hook it to your Wi-Fi, and you use an Android or an iPhone application to do that. So it automatically just talks to it, and it's literally just a screen comes up and says, hey, we found your device, and then you just plug in your Wi-Fi credentials, and it puts it on the Wi-Fi, and then you can flash it. Um, so because this is cloud-based, I can be in a hotel room 3,000 miles away, and I can update my security system from the hotel room using the hotel Wi-Fi and just flash these things remotely. Um, so if I'm, you know, gone and I start getting a lot of squirrely activity because these don't register motion, they register heat. I had one of these under a, a heating vent from the furnace and it kept registering whenever the furnace came on. Um, I can actually tweak that firmware remotely. Also, the documentation on these is just amazing. Um, it, it's just blew me away the amount of documentation they have on these and they walk you through a lot of things and they have a cellular version too so if you don't want to just do wi-fi you can do it right off of cellular and there's a small monthly charge for the cellular i think it's like 2g and 3g speeds but you can put this sucker out in the middle of nowhere and as long as you've got a cellular signal it works um, one of them did screw up for me and I had to go into the Linux command line and over serial give it the Wi-Fi credentials instead of through the Android app. And it was a known bug in these things. But so far they've been not bad. Um, the other thing I like is they have an online IDE. And here's the actual code for those uh, particle photons. Um, there's really no point in screenshotting this. There's not a whole lot to the code. Um, they just simply they have a startup routine or setup, which is where you register all your pinouts and you, you know serial begin and things. So I'm just changing some LED colors and getting the MAC address. Um, and setting the pin modes on these things. So I have like the board and the sensor. So I have an LED that blinks, and then I have that sensor where I do an input to see when there's motion. And then uh, the only other little magic is I'm getting the MAC address off of the uh, Wi-Fi chipset on the board, which I use that for the HTTP GET. And then the GET itself, I actually use one of their built-in libraries. Um, they come with just tons and tons and tons of libraries. Um, pretty much anything you can imagine. They, somebody's already written the code for it. So you can see right at the very top, I'm including their HTTP client. Um, the client's a little buggy. Um, I had to fight with it a couple times, and I had to tweak the code on the back end. But you can see here is the code right here where I'm just doing an HTTP get. I'm going over to the Raspberry Pi, which on my network it's a 1.121. And then here's the actual query string. Uh, if you remember E2 at all, it's your XML controller and the motion action, and then I've got some parameters. So I'm just saying version 1 and then the MAC address. It's very simple. I'm just doing an HTTP GET. When that happens, it does some magic in the background here, and it says, is Brian home? 
uh, is the system on or off or is it awake or asleep? And then it just, you know, through the code determines what it needs to happen. So when motion's detected, if I'm gone or I'm asleep or whatever, um, it'll text my phone through the AT&T and Verizon gateways. Um, and then it'll text 911 and say, hey, motion was detected at, and it'll give the address and then my cell phone number. Um, so the cell phone's, you know, sitting next to me and motion's detected. And before I even roll over, boom, 911's already been contacted. Um, if I wanted to rebuild this thing, I'd probably do it with this little guy called Chip. Um, each one of these, it's $9 board, but each one of these is full embedded Linux for nine bucks. And the specs on these are just insane. It's built in Wi-Fi. So this little board already has Wi-Fi, um, a one gigahertz processor, four gigs of internal storage, 512 RAM, Bluetooth four, and works on any display. So essentially you have, you know, this little guy with just a motion detector plopped right on top of it and then maybe a small enclosure and plug it straight into the wall. So this thing's probably the size of a credit card. Um, yeah, and you got a full-blown Linux computer running specs that are better than what I had 15 years ago. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, I did a full-blown Android application, and here's the application. I did a couple different uh, interfaces for the end user, but I basically settled on this. Um, I can run it in the emulator, but it won't work in the emulator because the emulator doesn't do Wi-Fi. But this had some some issues. Uh, you can see how it's a service. I had to run a background service because if you know anything about Android, if you go like that, boom, your application's dead. It just died. So it runs in a background service. Of course, on the emulator, it killed it, but uh, runs in the background service. So even if it's not in the foreground, it's running and it's constantly pinging away at this thing. Um, the big problem I had with that was just I'm not a Java guy. I haven't really ever worked with Java and Android's not really Java Java. It's like Google's version of Java. So I had to learn, you know, basic Android SDK and I had to learn how to do that. And then I'm doing some advanced things like I'm starting a service and then bringing the service to the foreground and then, you know, registering it with a whitelist because Android has this feature called Doze. So if you're not using your phone, it puts your phone into what's called Doze or low power mode. So it starts killing services that it thinks are not, you know, uh, not a priority. So like if you have Pandora on your phone and you set your phone down and walk away for 20 minutes, Pandora is probably not going to be running when you come back. Um, so what was happening is I would set this thing up at night and then in the morning I'd walk around to test and I was getting no messages. And that's because over the night Android killed the service because it didn't see it as a priority service. So I had to figure out how to, how to do that. Um, and here's the actual service itself. Uh, and it plays some music and stuff like that. I shouldn't say music, sounds. And it'll detect when the Wi-Fi is connected and disconnected. So when I walk out of my apartment and the Wi-Fi drops, it stops the timer in the background so it's not chewing up my battery. And then when I come home, it sees the Wi-Fi is reconnected and it starts the timer again. And then it says, hey, Brian's home. It sends that to the, to the Raspberry Pi, this guy, so that it knows I'm home. So before my keys even entered in the lock for me to walk into the apartment, it already knows that I'm home and it won't detect, you know, motion because I'm home and 911 won't get called and all that. Still a couple bugs in it, but uh, for the most part, it's working. Um, the other main hiccups that I really had was uh, just getting used to Android itself. And uh, originally I had everything in an activity until I learned about services. And then when I moved to the service, I had to do things a little differently. Um, I am actually going to do... I can find my notes, a full-blown Android tutorial series because I've learned quite a bit about Android. So I've actually been spending the morning just typing up like a basic uh, lesson plan of what we're going to start doing here. Um, I do want to get back to Qt. Um, I love C++ and Qt, but this is kind of a neat project. I may, like I said, redo this whole thing on, uh, what's it called, Chip, this little guy. Um, the code would probably be in Python instead of C++, though, unless I get really adventurous and want to do it all in C++ with Qt, which might actually be what I do. So that's it.